Hey everyone, welcome back to the PC Perspective Podcast. We are at episode 685. It's being recorded on July 13, 2022. I'm Sebastian Peak. I'm Jeremy Hellstrom. I'm Josh Walrath. And I'm Brett Metz Rudberg. <laughs> and uh, you can find out when we go live most of the time for events like this by either hitting the bell to be notified on YouTube or... Find out in advance, like sometimes up to an hour in advance, by signing up to our good old-fashioned mailing list. Yes, email lists. It's very popular these days for anyone with an at AOL email and others. It doesn't really matter. You can have any email address and sign up at PC. Hotmail works. Yeah, um, Hotmail. Uh, MSN. Prodigy. Um, as long as you accept yep. HTML and plain text, you're good to go. Mm, pcper.com mm-hmm. slash subscribe and you can support the site and podcast distribution by heading over to patreon.com slash pcper and becoming one of our exclusive patrons the people who actually help you know keep the site online and keep us doing this every week so oh and last week we we said hello to new patron ash and they asked for a personal message from Josh. Is there some specific message, or Josh, you're just going to riff? Well, it's it's nice that sometimes we can get more ash on the uh, on the show. We all need a little bit more ash. Uh, do I need to go further on this? Just... I think that's I think that's more than enough. <laughs> I was going to say you still need more practice. Would you say? Would you Why say you that? Dig deep. That's, that's an ash load for the show. There we go. That is. <laughs> Suck perfect. it, Trebek. We're going to throw it right back to Josh in Laramie, Wyoming for our food segment. All right. This one, uh, this was, uh, this was kind of a special one. It was unexpected. I was, I was kind of hoping for a burger. I haven't had a burger in a, well, you know, I guess I did have a burger last week, but. You know, something special, something different, something hot. Well, they, they had something hot, but this is something smashed outside, but it was far away. So anyway, yeah, they, uh, they uh, instead of, of chicken wings, they, they kind of did pork wings, otherwise known as pork shanks. These are three pork shanks tossed in the sauce of your choice, of which I chose... Um, angry buffalo. The pork shanks themselves are smoked, uh, so they're they're quite quite tasty. Served with tots, topped with green chili baked beans, sour cream, shredded cheddar, and paprika. I don't know. I didn't see a whole lot of shredded cheddar. I guess there was some in there, but the, uh, mm. the green chili it's baked beans hands. were were fantastic on top of the tots and the tots were perfectly done the pork wings pork shanks again very tender very tasty uh yeah and just you know smeared with angry buffalo sauce it when the gal was explaining to me she she went really fast and so i missed all that and so i like ordered a side of fries as well i didn't eat the fries in fact i didn't eat all the tots just because there were so many, so there are still fries in my fridge just sitting there because, yeah, because I'm stupid. And, yeah, anyway, but no, it was fantastic. I'd never had the uh, the pork wings before, the pork shanks, and, yeah, they were, they were tasty. As oh. is customary in recent uh, weeks, our top story has to be Intel Arc Graphics, another exciting development is uh, Gamers Nexus apparently has their hands on an ARC A750, which they will be working on soon. They just published their review of the A380 today. I saw that was on their YouTube channel, but very interesting. The A750, by the way, presumably has 24 XE cores and 12 gigabytes of GDDR6 memory on a 192-bit bus. So that is considerably more powerful than the A380. I wonder what this one will compete with when they... I think that that, uh, didn't uh, GN come out and say that they're not actually reviewing it. The Intel people came by with a sample and they 
benchmarked a few things and then the people took the sample away. Oh, really? I don't know. I should I watch the video I read that on Twitter. I should watch the video. Watch the video. We should all watch the video. Okay. Let's watch the video. But yeah, we're getting closer. I hope the, uh, I hope the design is, uh, fun and exciting. It didn't look too bad in that shot. Um, it's curious what, you know, the a seven fifty will compete with probably the 6,600 or 6,500. Maybe, I don't know, maybe 6,600 because the a three eighty was a 30, 40 competitor, right? Uh, it was, it was keep your five eighty time. Honestly, that's what we're our takeaway was yeah. on that. It was slower with. than a 6,400 Radeon. So unless you're using the enhancement for 3d mark and all you want to do is run time spy and bass and i mean who doesn't gains i i sense a certain i don't know what it is in your voice it could be sarcasm <laughs> maybe let's uh mm. continue on to more intel news and speaking of percentage increases 10 percent that's the number the i9 13900k has apparently been tested already Fully reviewed, perhaps even, according to this videocards.com article. And it has 10% faster single core performance than the current 12900K. So if you just bought a 12900K, Kent, you made a terrible mistake. Because the oh. same motherboard would have allowed you to run a processor with significantly better performance. Perhaps. 24 core, 32 perhaps. thread CPU. So here's uh, the CPU Z screenshots of a Raptor Lake Core i9 socket 1700. Oh, look at that voltage. That's up there. Hmm. It says Core yeah, i9. What do you think X about that series? What do you think about that? I think that might be overclocked. That's what I'm wondering. But we'll see. I mean, it's it's running at 5.5 gigahertz. Didn't they see a 5.7 peak in this run? Was that where I saw this? Yes. Maybe I just saw it someplace else. Base clock of three, okay, boost of 5.5, and then the thermal velocity boost, or whatever the current generation of it's called, up to 5.7, apparently. And uh, here's some CPU-Z benchmark results, of course. Cinebench R23. It doesn't seem like much, but when you're talking about single-threaded performance going from 1936 to 2198, ah. and of course, much better multi-thread. Of course, but it has more cores, so given... Yeah, they were comparing it to a 12900KF. Oh, hmm. Maybe Kent's okay, because he just got a KS. He might be okay. It's 300 megahertz oh. sore, though, too. Hmm. Yes. Mm. Indeed. So some of that, uh, mm. it, that's why I didn't say, I was careful not to say IPC. I said single-threaded performance, because a lot of that comes from the higher clocks. So if, <clears> maybe if you have mm -hmm. a 12900K and just overclock it, you'll get similar performance to Raptor Lake single thread performance yeah i think i think uh there 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 there's some people out there saying that there's very little ipc change that mainly they're adding the more cores and higher clocks okay and i'm sure they can do this without increasing the power consumption because they're leveraging the brand new same process technology as before the now venerable what number is that intel 7 mm. Mm, which is 10 nanometers ish well, used to be called 10 nanometers. nothing yeah. is what it seems brett i'm sure right. that's <clears> there was some what's the uh involved. what's the efficiency non-efficiency core breakdown of that one i don't remember i um, did they was that a big change 12 eight, eight biggins and 16 smalls oh they're, they're just increasing oh. the small core count hmm really really i don't like it the 10 900k <laughs> had 10 cores. And then we went back to 8 with the 11900K. And we stayed with 8 of, uh, performance cores with the 12900K. I would like to see Intel match the 5950X at some point. Not just have to try this beating them with clock speed. Anyway. Uh, remember, when, remember when 8 cores was enough? Mm -hmm. Everybody loved eight cores. Hey, you don't need any more than 9, that. 9900K is still a pretty good processor for gaming. As Drew Bauer yeah. recently noted in a video, somebody had a question about 4K gaming. It's like, with well, 4K gaming, a modern eight-core CPU is not going to hold you back at 4K. 
So just upgrade your GPU, stay on that recent-ish platform, and play at 4K. And then you won't be seeing. And if you need now. to update your, if you need to update your GPU, sometime in the next couple of weeks to a month is probably your sweet spot if you don't have one yet. Yeah. Don't worry. As prices continue to come down, they will also climb because of Indeed. inflation. So just. <laughs> oh, yes, your your like, dollar oh, keeps buying. Graphics card less prices are finally back to where they were two years ago, and now they're climbing. <laughs> now they're forty percent higher. What the hell is happening? Oh, everything's just oh. more expensive every day. I didn't actually buy anything for Prime Day this year, this year. What? I know. What? I mean, there's lots of SSD deals, but I mean, how many more SSDs does one person need? I've got two all major of, ones. Of them. I don't know, Alan. So Alan, if you're watching, how many SSDs does one person need? Yes. You crazy look bastard. Th- Ethereum's going to be proof of stake any day now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, just keep dreaming. <laughs> go ahead go ahead i had to get that one in there <laughs> all right we should get back on track to an exciting story that i saw posted in our public discord earlier and immediately added to the show notes i know i missed bluetooth? alan's ssd reviews too really uh, bluetooth audio yes but listen bluetooth audio is about to get a lot better well it couldn't get worse it's true and it's been the same for so long the sbc codec is ancient and we still use it but according to this article on the verge we're on the cusp of a new generation of wireless headphones that are more power efficient sound better and support novel new features like being able to connect an unlimited number of devices to a single source yes bluetooth le audio is coming why didn't they name it the, uh, the the specification formerly known as bandwidth in the new generation. <laughs> <clears throat> so I'm aging myself. I'm sorry. Yeah. Prince. Prince, when he first came out, it was Prince. And, the and then he was team. the artist formerly known as. And, right. Because yeah. was it Warner that owned his name and then he got, finally got it back? I don't know. That's confusing. That's thing. Anyway. If you have a stage name, I, your label might own that name. You might not own your own name. If it's your state. Well, technically, uh, the pirate Bluetooth didn't actually own his name. It was uh, rented out to someone else. And why was he called Bluetooth? Did he just have rotten teeth and they appeared blue? Is that where that term comes from? Uh, he, I forget what it was that he ate, but he tended to dye them and then... Oh, okay. Although, why you notice that as opposed to the, the burning candles in his beard, I don't know. But Once you see somebody with blue teeth, it's hard to look at anything else but the teeth. Well, it worked for the Celts for a little bit against the Romans, didn't it? Hmm. And that was more than just the teeth. All right. Well, that's why you come to the channel. It's for yes, a history lesson. Exactly. Let's move uh, back to the article we were talking about. Of the elements that make up Bluetooth LE audio, the the one I'm most interested in is the new codec. To get off of SBC, they have the new LC3 codec. So the the trade off is going to be: Do you want higher quality audio at the same bit rate? So apparently that's not increasing. Or what they claim is better audio quality at less than half of the bit rate. So that would mean lower power consumption because you're not sending as much data. So I'm just hoping for better quality at the same. I want to max out the data rate and get better quality. That's all I want. There are other options. There's other codecs, obviously, than SBC. There's uh, Aptex, which is, I think, much better, but it's not free. So you have to license it from Qualcomm, and that costs money. So there's a lot of places that just won't do that including Apple, so they have AAC, which is slightly better than SBC, but I'm hoping for lower latency as well, because right now Aptex low latency is, I think, the best if you're doing anything where you need the video and audio to sync. Are we ever going to get away from wired when it really absolutely has to work all the time with the highest fidelity with the lowest latency? Yeah, but you're not going to like what happens to the atmosphere to be able to increase the conductivity to the point where it does that. Hey, now we're going into science fiction. It's, it's a little plasma between friends. <laughs> yeah, I mean, as long as you don't get right in between it. Well, it's energizing anyway. Oh, well, yeah. I get it. Okay. That was pretty good. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Look at this pretty picture. Uh, but it's not about the build. It's not about that Corsair um, liquid cooling build. 
in this case. It's about the power supply at the bottom. Now they have, Corsair has launched their updated HXI series power supplies. Now they've had HXI power supplies before. This HX1500I is new and they've upgraded the HX1000I. These are 80 plus platinum certified power supplies, fluid dynamic bearing fans, and a 10 year warranty. And of course they're IQ compatible because it's Corsair, which means you can control everything from IQ. And uh, they just released these yesterday, I think. So if you're looking for a power supply, make sure if you're looking at Corsair that you get the new for 2022, because you might find like an HX1000i and it's not the new one. You need CP-9020214, okay? Be very careful about this. No, you need 1.5, right? Well, that's if you want the 1500 watt. Oh, the 15. Okay, yeah, sorry, yeah. sorry, sorry. Now, that one is going to be $400, and the 1000 watt Ouch. is 260 Now, these are like digital <clears throat> yeah. power supplies with all the bells and whistles and the latest and greatest technologies. Do they, do they, they support the, the new PCIe? That's what I need cards. to ask. I need to ask our Corsair representative because I didn't see anywhere in the PR or the specifications about like GPU momentary. Yeah, it doesn't look like they have the one with the uh, sense cables and all that. So no. that's weird that they would offer something that kind of high end without those features that yeah. we're going to need within it, the next six months. It seems like a high end current gen product and that they will then have to answer with a new generation product later on. Oh, this sweet. Year. So I'm for more than by 400 that bucks. Mm -hmm. <laughs> more than yes, for a lot more. This was a, a bit depressing. I saw this uh, post from Jeremy today. It said selling PCs like it's 2020. And I'm like, oh, well, of course, they're probably on a, on the rise again, just like at the beginning when everybody had to work at home. And But no, he wasn't no. being sarcastic. They've been on the rise. They are now in pretty much free fall. Oh. And I mean, there are a number of reasons for it over and above the obvious one, uh, but it does not look good. So your biggest hit was Chromebooks. Uh, that is why HP went down by 27.6% sales compared to this time last year. That's huge. Like a, a four or 5% drop is big. Upwards of 10 heads are rolling. Losing more than a quarter of your sales is not good. But the thing is that everyone who's got a Chromebook or wanted a Chromebook has one now. There, there's no compelling reason to move to the next generation of Chromebook because, well, it's still a Chromebook. It, 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 they don't get better. They don't get worse. So that's had a huge gut out of the market. Yeah. Uh, we're also seeing the finally starting to see the problems from the Shanghai lockdown where a lot of the, the small components, the SMDs and that, just weren't being made for over a month. So, you know, there's a supply chain shortage as well. But the overall, we're talking Lenovo down 12%, uh, Dell 5.3, Acer almost 20, and Apple 22.5% down. Oh, be still so my heart. At, yeah. You look at the overall market, you're looking at a 15% shrinkage in everything. And part of this is that some people that want certain components can't buy them because that's part of what the PC industry is going for is that I want to buy uh, as a, as a business, a swack of the next thousand laptops I buy. I want to be from the same model so that they're consistent. We know what we're dealing with and like, yeah, we don't have anything in that amount of supply. So that's sort of dropping it. But then the other part is that it's just, we had went through the huge bunch of purchases when everyone started to work remotely. That's gone. Uh, everyone who's got one needs one. We're a little bit short of the renewal cycle of three years. It's it's just m a monstrous drop. Josh has well, something. Maybe like maybe the PC industry just got out of the pool and we're changing their shorts. Yeah, it's it's just yes, chilling. yeah, <clears throat> just yes. you know. Shrinkage. It happens. A little shrinkage. It doesn't mean it's not going to bounce back. Right. And it will. Probably. Assuming anyone can mm. afford to buy a computer they could, next year. They could spring back up soon. 
you know, we could see a hard increase in PC sales. Ah, it's an explosive it's just, oh, yeah. increase in sales. It's just the length you of the had to play along. It, it could be coming. We don't know. It could be coming soon. I am now proud of you, Sebastian. And it would be buyers, yeah. you know, getting shafted if they don't take advantage of, of those deals. That was that was subtle, Jeremy. It's pretty <laughs> pretty impressive. You, <laughs> you've done well. Yeah. It's interesting because you know TSMC just uh, released their their quarterly. Uh, stuff and they're still going strong so i mean there are a lot of orders in and there's a lot of that still coming along but yeah uh our the video cards there's going to be a ton of them and uh i think yeah within the next 30 days they'll probably plateau out about what the prices that that you're going to get and you may see some other sales now and then but uh i think that that has pushed out the next generation stuff some weeks to months because there's a lot of inventory and yeah, they're like, you know, people in Texas, there's some guy in Texas selling 200 RTX 2060s. You know, why is some random guy in Texas selling 200 of those? Because yeah, miners took a huge chunk. And I think far larger than what anyone on that side of the industry was willing to admit. Yes, 100% there. I mean, we kind of saw it coming, but uh, from there end, you can't you can't tell people don't buy it. It's not going to be worth it in the long term. You got to get them buying it. Yeah. It, it's not good though. So because we have seen, uh, uh, and it's the eternal roller coaster too. Like we've been seeing for the last, I don't know, eight to 10 years, a steady increase in PC sales. It's, it's never stopped. It's always gotten better. The, there was a running gag for the longest time. And I was like, this is the death. This is the year of the death of the PC. And like, and once again, they sold more than they've ever have in the last 10 years. And like, yeah, but eventually it has to plateau and fall down a little bit. This is a bit further down than I think a lot of people were expecting. But of course, it's unlikely to be permanent. On the plus side, Steam OS. It's not just for Steam decks. And apparently Valve, this is a story from Video Cards. Valve is not anti-competitive about this. If you want to make your own Steam OS handheld portable product, they will partner with you. They will help you. And apparently they are optimizing SteamOS for AMD RDNA 2 graphics for those APUs, like the 6800U powered devices that are out there. There's a string here that is screenshotted that shows this uh, GPD HK project owner answering questions and talking about how they've been working with Valve and optimizing for their 6800U powered handheld. But it sounds like from the tone of the article, and the information out there that we'll see more and more of those Steam Deck style devices from various companies running AMD APUs like the 6800U. That could be a good thing. Maybe this is the replacement for the PC for gamers eventually. Some kind of appliance, some kind of gaming system that just plays games, like some kind of a, a device you just plug right into your TV and have a controller mm. and play mm -hmm. games on it and not worry about mm. this whole like antiquated you know personal computer box that you know, has all this overhead like how many watts your power sounds madness <laughs> care about know. that what if it was efficient and it didn't draw a thousand watts but it played all the latest games that everybody wants to play mm. and got online mm -hmm. you can play like online together all right this bit mm -hmm. is probably annoying at this point <laughs> uh i think it's your lunacy at this uh, point uh, mm, i think you're a lunatic speaking of gaming Let's talk and about lunatics. yes and lunatics gaming quick hits, starting with Skyrim together, reborn. Is it all of those things? Y you thought you were free. You thought you could finally get away from this bloody game, and so they finally finished a mod which allows you to play with up to two to eight friends in Skyrim. Uh, the, the warning is that you have to choose a party leader uh, because that's what the save will be based off of. They're the only ones that can talk to NPCs to accept quests and pick up quest items. But the rest of you can run around looting and pillaging and destroying dungeons and figuring out the puzzle quests and interacting with stuff. And, you know, it, they're probably at this point about 100,000 downloads. It was just over 90,000 earlier. They're... Are of course, as you'd expect, a little 
a few growing pains with it, but for the most part, a lot of people have been playing it and apparently having a lot of fun because, I mean, a bunch of lunatics in multiplayer Skyrim is kind of amusing. And they put some serious work into this and admitted a mistake. They, they tried to say it was done completely in-house, and no, they used Skyrim Script Extender like everyone does, and they've sort of admitted that. And been, made, they made up for that. But yeah, if you aren't sick of it or have a friend that hasn't spent much time in Skyrim or has never experienced being sent to outer space by a giant, now's your time to let them experience that. And see how many mother mods you can pack onto it before the entire thing explodes. I wonder how it handles death. You mean respawns? Do you do? Does it respawn, or do you just have to all go back to a a save? So I didn't check this. I expect you can do a save, but I'm expecting it's more like when Lydia died. <clears throat> you know, oh. eventually after the fight, they get up again, unless oh. like they really truly die, like all of the companions I've ever had in the game. You know, that actually makes sense that your body doesn't like disappear and respawn, that you actually just become alive again, right from where you're standing. Yeah. You just down. do the kneel down thing and you can't interact mm-hmm. until the battle's over and then you're back again. Mm-hmm. Hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay. Mm-hmm. Next story. Mm-hmm. CNBC is reporting video game sales are set to fall for the first time in years. It says as the industry braces for recession. What is this? A theme? I, I think so. It's well, all depressing. Because I mean, it goes hand already... in hand with the PC sales, right? Like, yeah, it's a companion piece to the PC sales article earlier. Yeah. Because global video game sales are forecasted to contract 1.2 percent. That's not big, but I mean, look at how big the market got over the last couple of years. It expanded 26 percent, and. Uh, has been growing for the last, you know, almost decade. So, yeah. well, there was that little incident with uh, some sort of pandemic thing that kept mm-hmm. a lot of people behind closed doors and looking for something to do. And that's when it exploded so, in size. Right. And then we've we've had some other global pressures, you know, there's, you know, wars, <laughs> stuff like that, supply chain, margin accounts, fast lane. Um yeah, and, they, and of course, there are certain countries that are no longer really purchasing a lot of video games because they have sanctions placed against them. Mm-hmm. What do you guys have against Canada anyways? Yeah. It's well, the way Canadian. you pronounce URL. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> My name is Earl. <laughs> uh, but uh, I think the article points out that there's probably going to be a rebound in 2023, you know, mid-2023. So it's a short, it's a short dip. There's going to be some really big blockbuster games Microsoft is coming out with. Um, I know that uh, Starfield is one of them. The other, I mentioned another one too. I don't remember which. But yeah, be some big games that are coming out. Which usually, you know, you get a big game like that, it really helps the velocity and kind of pulls a lot of other uh, a lot of other properties along in its wake. Their wake. Speaking of pulling things along in their wake, Unity, mm. which is I am reading here from Business Wire. It has a majority ownership of Silver Lake and Sequoia. They are merging with Iron Source. So it's uh there's a lot of uh, financial type stuff in here. Like Oh no, really- no, it's it's not financial. No. Do you do you recall hearing about Iron Source at all? No. They 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 are no boy they're no bueno. No. At least they were back in the day. They're still no bueno. Malware bites still detects them. Malwarebytes will still detect the, the their Mac OS variant and remove it and likely break any game that depends on it. And uh, yeah, as far as I know, uh, the Microsoft Antivirus Defender there will still remove it as well because it like overrides UAC. It injects into processes just randomly on your system on the off chance they can feed you an ad. So yeah, Unity, which makes... A huge chunk of video games. That's the engine that a lot of the video, video games you're playing on right now depend on. So the VCs that own Unity are also picking up these guys. Famous as for like... Adware. Not a downloader. Uh, 
and, and they're flat out doing it for a huge chunk of money. So there are a lot of Unity developers panicking right now uh, because it's like, can I get my game out before this happens and I'm associated with what Iron Source, the ad company slash malware provider, is going to inject into my games. And interestingly enough, the feedback has been enough that apparently both stocks have plummeted today. So there's some VCs that are probably a little bit uh, busy finding excuses as to why this is totally not their fault. The Business Wire article here, at least little poll quotes like, To succeed today, creators needed an extensive set of solutions and products working in concert to power amazing user experiences and sustainable business growth. And I also see end-to-end platform synergy from the combination of the companies to enhance Unity's offerings. Yes. You've got a lot of voiceover work in your future, by the way. Yeah, especially if you can say that without breaking into a grin or laughing. They're going to be <laughs> deeply connected and interactive by integrating yeah. creation and growth more tightly. Creators are able to leverage data. Take a drink every time. Wait a second. Word. Isn't that the Stardock advertisement from back in the day? The, the old DRM company that ended up being like part of the Sony rootkit and oh, that sort okay. of fun stuff. Oh God, I'm going to need a drink before this one. Hey, I, I actually like the the headline bit that I put in the mail message better than this one. What? Which was the the ghost of Spectre. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I already used that, so I couldn't. Well, I had to make the James writes, Bond reference. Spectre never dies. What's the new one? Ret bleed. Patching will affect performance. On this one. Great. Of course, um, it's tradition. As, as as is the custom. Although, to be honest, it's only like uh, about a 13 to 40% overhead, which compared to some of them were like 100 and 120%, not awful. But the problem is that this is yet a brand new uh, Spectre variant off of speculative execution branches that we didn't know about. So we this there's more of them. This one is actually ridiculously hard to do. Uh you need to actually have a good idea of what you're targeting. But the problem is that they're using subroutine return instructions, which is not something that's, it's, it's a unique way of uh, taking advantage of Spectre. So nothing that exists right now, or at least nothing until yesterday existed that could really mitigate it. Uh, so it, it's just, Yet another way of, wow, speculative execution is wonderful and we love it and it's why our computers work so well, but it is also terrifyingly insecure in a lot of ways. And after I posted it, Intel said, you know, we've already worked with this, we've got it covered, uh, and by default, they're already in because the one unique thing about this is it doesn't infect the Windows machines. It affects everything else. It's not a Windows vulnerability, but if well, you're running when you out, said it was a, a Spectre vulnerability. That should be any any OS that can support arranging the um, the. There's the there's the word that support. Act. Apparently, the Maybe. Windows doesn't support that variation. Oh, <laughs> they ain't figured out how to do program. that. Yet. They can't write a program that puts the right execution, the, th- the execution codes and the execution stack into the CPU in the, in, in windows. You can't do, you can't do Doesn't it. Doesn't that sound like Microsoft? It's weird. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it, it, it was odd, but yeah. So a lot of, and what they tested against was uh, AWS and Google compute engine. So, I mean, you got your Unix, you got your Linux, you got, uh, I forget what some of the other ones were that they tested against and, Yep, vulnerable there. Mac OS. But for whatever yeah, reason, OS Windows, vulnerable. it was just like, um, I, I, I don't know what you're saying here. So their assembler actually doesn't doesn't create the doesn't. same execution <laughs> in lineage. <laughs> yes, which is probably a bad thing, but in this case, hmm. for once, it's a good thing. So run Windows to be secure. That's a novel. In this case. Right. It seems a bit so bad. we're looking at Zen one through Zen two and core generation six to eight, including the epics and Xeons. Okay, which 
is oh. where you have to worry about uh, AWS and Google Compute Engine. And I'm, assu- I'm assuming is your. They didn't mention that, but uh, I don't think they had to check it. Yeah. So, yeah. The patches are out there. It'll hurt a bit, but it's better than the alternative. Hey, what speaking was the number of there? thirteen percent. Oh, sorry, God. Well, I was just going to transition away from the story, but if you have more to say, go right. No, ahead. it's just a question of how, what the performance impact 13 is going to be. Thirteen to thirty-nine. I, I think. I re- yeah, just that little range of thirteen to thirty-nine. Just that's all. Yeah. Yeah, you won't. It's fine. You won't even notice the missing limb. Now there is a reason to upgrade. If if you're on the fence about it, if it's not affecting Zen four, for example, there you go. Or, or even or, Zen three, as far as I can tell. Oh, okay. Yeah. Or so. ninth gen plus. There, get off yeah. eighth gen. Mm-hmm. But speaking we'll go back to of gen. speaking of patching mm-hmm. things and Microsoft, Microsoft 365. If you're one of those customers who likes to rent your office suite instead of owning it outright, then you will have to upgrade to Windows 10 or greater because next year you won't be able to even install the suite on Windows 8.1 or Windows 7. So, sorry, Windows yep. 7 is becoming like Windows XP to them. You're on Windows 7, you're a dinosaur. Yeah. Why would you do that? Well, yeah. But the best thing about it is that if you're getting patches for Windows 7, you are paying them money every month. Oh, at Ouch. this point, yeah. You're like on the extended support program. Yeah. You are paying money for this. Yeah. And they're even willing to cut you off. You better the be on Windows 10? For Windows 10 will come up soon. Because they can make even more money. Why would they... Maybe... I guess I'd have to know how much they're paying per month for support versus what a license for, you know, however many. It depends on how many users you have, but it's a couple yeah. hundred per. <sighs> per? Is it annual? Uh, sorry, I think per 100 licenses. It's a couple of bucks per user. It is already time for picks of the week. This is what happens on slow news weeks when we don't have some major product to review or exciting thing to talk about but it's it's almost 11 almost so yeah i mean as we record this is 10 58 eastern so don't get too upset i'm sure the final running time of this show will be around 45 minutes or so maybe even longer if i just don't edit anything out i've been recording for 45 minutes at this point hmm so hmm okay all right anyway all right let's let's move to it's time for picks of the week, and Josh will get us started. When is seven hundred and ninety nine dollars and ninety nine cents appropriate? Well, when that covers all the things. If you go to EVGA site, their RTX thirty eighty twelve gig card, which is you know eleven hundred twelve hundred bucks, they're all seven ninety nine. Interesting, because when I first started this, that top one was still in stock, but now it's out. The water block ones, seven ninety nine. The regular cooling one, well, the the for the win three is sold out, but seven ninety nine. You can still get the XC three Ultra Gaming for seven ninety nine. So, if you want a thirty eighty twelve gig card, which is almost as fast as the thirty eighty Ti. You can get it for seven hundred and ninety nine dollars and ninety nine cents. I don't know how long this uh, sale is going to be. Maybe they'll just do it till they sell out. I have no idea. It's a great deal for a really fast card, and Jeremy? it's got twelve gigs of memory. Yes, it does. Jeremy, your pick. Well, I have a question to ask first. How do you pronounce it? What, Ty or T.I.? Uh, is it Nikon? No, Nikon. It's Nikon. Is it Nikon? Is it Nikon? It is Nikon. It's Nikon. It's Nikon. It's Nikon. Come on. <laughs> Ta-da. It's Throat Wobbler Mangrove. Mm. <laughs> yes. I voted for yes, him. Yes, <laughs> yeah, so apparently Nikon is going to go away from SLR cameras completely. So my pick of the week is... If you can find an SLR from them for sale anywhere, I would buy it because it's going to be worth a lot of money in the not-too-distant future. Uh, There are a lot of photographers that swear by these guys, and even if they don't particularly like them, their bayonet mount isn't going to work on any other camera, so they're going to need a new one eventually. It's sad news. I'm not happy to see this, uh, but honestly, yeah, 
if you can find any of them for sale, probably grab them now. You'll be able to resell them for stupid amounts of money in the not too distant future. Or I could be completely wrong. Uh, I, I, I think, think you're right because when people invest as much money as they do on lenses, then yeah, you that's true. It's not going to fit in the mirrorless one. It's not even going to work in the mirrorless one. It's right. Different systems, and if you use the wrong types of lenses, and especially if you're on a full frame, if you're on a Nikon full frame camera, those right. people are going to want like a spare, unless they have to migrate everything over to new mirrorless compatible lenses and things even if they i mean i guess if there's a nikon full frame that takes the same lenses like a d800 series i don't know i don't know i wouldn't bet on it brett your pick tonight um i've grown quite used to these uh very large screen 34 inch wide screen displays 3440 by 1440 2k plus ish display for Side by side application viewing, game playing with wide, uh, wide viewing angles, and lots of of the ability to kind of you know look to the side and all that. Grown quite used to that for both business and pleasure. And Jeremy, you know what I'm talking about here. When I see a deal that pops up in one of these for 2020 2019 pricing, I want to call it out. 160 hertz, not 144. So this is, in my opinion. New electronics, new compressed glass, 3440, 1440 VA display, but 99% sRGB, again, 160 hertz, full 34 inch 2K plus display for 349, which is roughly uh, what I paid for one of my AOC um, in 2020 timeframe. Anyway. Great deal. Those are they're now right around four hundred, maybe a little bit under four hundred with Prime Day. So, three forty nine is actually a good deal right now. And if you're this watching this display. live, you may actually be able to get that price. This is this is not Prime. This is LG. You can buy this from Amazon, uh, which is it very, says ship very and sold by Amazon. So I would certainly hope it's Prime. Last point on this is that uh, LG Direct also has this for the same price. It's not oh, a good. Prime Day deal. It's not a Prime Day deal. That's why I wrote it like that. Not a Prime okay. Day deal. Uh, but it is available Amazon Prime. So, um, you know, a lot of people are comfortable shopping there. People seem very comfortable spending a lot of money on Amazon. It's true. Yeah. Yeah. And there are others. It, it could be a trend because I'm looking, I just clicked on another similar model. And of course, there's only one of these left, but lower refresh rate, another the LG. LG. Yeah. The L- yeah. This is the previous glass. 144 yeah. was the top of the line. Previous one. This uh, is only uh, 30, 12, 25, 60 by 1080. Yeah, so it's not even it's not in the same ballpark. No so, but the previous thirty-four inch, uh, thirty-four forty, fourteen forty glass was one forty-four hertz electronic driven refresh. That was kind of where they maxed out. So this has got to be a next generation LG panel with different electronics to match match um, or to to get up to one sixty, which means I'd be if I had one of those, I'd be comfortable driving it at the one forty-four. I mean, the one forty-four panels, I usually uh, max drive at one hundred and twenty when I'm playing games on them or something. That's funny. Cause I overclock just, my hundred to 120. You know, it, you're living on the edge, Josh. You're a mad man. You're living on the edge. Yep. Not really. It if looks you, great. And, so if you're not living on the edge, you're taking up too much room. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to point out that Keith in the YouTube chat just said, what ever happened to Josh tech? Well, Keith, well, he spelled it wrong for one thing. Whenever, that Josh does a video review. That's a Josh Tech production. Look at the end of the last review. They're in the credits, because I put scrolling credits at the end. You can Ooh, see that it's a Josh Tech production, that. that it's, you know, the executive producer, director, all of that stuff. All the credits were there. So you, it's it's still alive and well. I'm, mm. I don't have a pick this week. My pick is uh, that all of the Prime stuff is going to be gone by the time this actually... <laughs> Airs. Yes. Uh, looking at the Sorry. Josh Tech 3060 OC review, which uh, people apparently were pretty happy with. I was seeing a very high nice. like to dislike ratio. Oh, nice. For this because, you know, it's Josh and he was uh, lucidly explaining his opinions about things. And then there was some uh, somewhat clever editing here and there in the video. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. 
Mm-hmm. Wait till I you, agree. Wait till like, I hold watch up that like, card. Watch this. Watch this. This is great. Here comes. Here comes. Nice. Yep. Stuff like that. I, that's my specialty. Uh, all those little Da Vinci Resolve tricks. But if you go to the very end, when Josh wraps it up, uh, there are some end credits that you can enjoy. See a Josh Tech production. <laughs> that guy. <laughs> Make up maybe sound yes. yes. Sound yes. yes. So you That's have good. to watch to the end. So what was the, uh, what was the program? What was the program you used to uh, AI ML oh, to crap. increase the frame rate? Yeah, I was. I I'll have to make that my pick next week because I forgot I was going to do it this week. Josh yeah. sent me a video that was fifteen oh frames per second. Oh, I was okay. watching it like what? What's wrong with this video? What's happening? And it was, that was it. Like the actual raw file was two gigabytes, but it was only 15 frames per second. So how did that happen? I don't what know. What happened there? Um, it was, uh, I did somehow the exposure got changed on my webcam and that mm-hmm. cuts the frame rate in half. If you don't have wow. it as the, the base exposure. So it was weird. But it didn't matter. Because I used, let me find it. I think I just found the listing here. Flow frame. Here we go. So this will be my actual pick. Okay. Oh, you have a pick. My pick this week is... uh, (laughs) Hold on. Look at that. My pick this week is flow frames. It's free. Or you name your own price, but you can pay nothing if you want to. A fast video interpolation for any GPU. And look at the It works well, here. doesn't it? It does. It works really well. Think of imagine no, I want to see the old shitty Plymouth more. <laughs> Starsky and Hutch. <laughs> <laughs> imagine if you will this is more like what Josh's video looked like to me. You know, it was anyway, uh it gets rid of so that. So what go ahead. What card here. did you run this on? What A thirty eighty. Oh, okay. And it took, it didn't take that long. I walked away. It took at least 20 or 30 minutes, I think, possibly more. Mm -hmm. But it took the video and it it looks, you know, before and after. It's it's like interpolation on a TV, the soap opera effect, but good. Because it's, it's doing it slowly, offline. It is not real time. And it does a fantastic job. It made Josh's video look 30 FPS for real. And I was able to use it for his... Excellent RTX 3060 review, which you can check out at PC Per on you uh, YouTube. YouTube.com slash PC Per. Hey, congratulations on getting a pick. Thank you. Thank you, Josh. Power to the people. It only yep. took you reminding me that I had one. It's okay. It's a first step. Well, mm-hmm. maybe a third or fourth step, but. That's our show for this week it's probably a little bit longer than last week which should make some people happy and might make some other people unhappy or yeah, you can't knows. please everybody what are you gonna do no I, I don't know Just what we're can't. gonna do maybe have a show that's exactly 60 minutes and zero seconds hmm. even if that means well, sitting Mr. here Editor. and waiting i mean this is coming from the guy who did the 1337 made my video mm-hmm. elite you can do it. Your last video was 1337, exactly? Nice. No, it was one of them before. But, Josh's yeah. mm-hmm. RX 6700 XT review. 6800 XT. Oh, it was 6800 XT? Okay. Yeah, yeah. the Merc. Was it 319? Yes, the, the Merc 319, yes. That was, that was Leet. That was... Yes. That's a phone call for you, Josh. No, it's for me, Josh. but I'll oh. give up soon. Your, your, your publicist is calling. So yeah, for those of you who wanted a longer podcast, this is what you're going to get. Just this. It's my filler. It's my fault. Exactly. It's just just filler. At least it's not dead air. Yeah. (laughs) You could be watching something else. (laughs) Okay. But you're not. I'll I'll erase all of that. We should just make the podcast exactly 50 minutes and 36 seconds long. (laughs) Or something there. (laughs) <laughs> just put it up on the screen it's perfect and I can't maybe... believe how accurate you were I can't believe it it's perfect 
All right, I, we don't have anything else left. I don't think. I don't. Do we do a proper uh, outro, Josh? Can you give us a proper outro? Let me go to your camera. Hey, Here you go. Hey, you know what? We really appreciate you. She she better. <laughs> exactly. Why don't we say. take that from it? Take that from the top. <laughs> We'd like to thank you for watching the PC Perspective Podcast. We're on every Wednesday pretty much without fail because we have no lives outside of our stinking offices. So until next week, we'll see you then. Good night. Please help me. Good night. <sighs> Kent, that's redundant. Uh, I'm trapped in this room. Send help. <laughs> All right, I'm going to stop the recording.